make sure try to submit that in the PDF, not on the word base. And next time on was try to submit that in the PDF format. Users and it doesn't include any images. But there, that all okay. Whose task is this uh, like image? I yeah, shared this screenshot. It's uh, Satya Prakash. So why can't you make a document? I told you to share in a document, right? Make sure try to submit that in the document, not image. In that image, even you don't have the name. Just make sure in document, make sure you should have your name. Or create the name of the document at least. Third one. Correct. Many of them were saying definition while annex is more secure. You can see most of them have the same. Yeah, this is Ajay.
Yes, I like it. Good. Make sure send it in PDF, okay? Mm, all right. So remaining, I'll validate that. So <clears throat> you got the answer for that, like why Linux is more secure than Windows? Hmm? How many of you find that? So have you gone through the types of kernels here? Hmm? I'll tell you a simple example why Linux is of more secure than Windows. So if you if you understand about the uh, types of kernels here, Let me take this Right. So many have done with the task. <laughs> All right. So if you see here this part, especially this monolithic and micro kernels in Ayo. So why, why Linux is more secure than Windows is? If you observe, can you see some of these management services like your file management, uh, drivers management, or memory management, all these things are running at the user space only. So there are two spaces. One is the user mode and kernel mode, okay? So if you see, whenever a application running in this scenario in micro kernel basis, most of the most of the applications can able to access to those services in the user level itself. Are you getting my point? In the user level itself, they can try to access to these services. Means if you observe in Windows, especially in Windows, when we run any virus, okay, imagine we have run a virus in this Linux. Oh, sorry, in Windows. So when that virus got executed in that system, what happened? It will try to affect entire system there. Means it will try to take the control or corrupt the files of the system. Means completely it can take the access of the services. Okay, why? Because most of the services are running at the user level itself. In Windows based scenarios, I'm talking. Okay. So in Windows based scenario, most of the services are running at the user level itself. Okay. So whenever a malware got executed, imagine this is also kind of a, uh, a program, an application you can say. Okay. So whenever we run any application, that applications are having the services in the application level itself. Means in user level itself, we have that services. So there is a chance for affecting the system files also at the time. You're getting my point? But when it comes to the Linux based operating systems, most of the services running at the kernel space only. So if you observe, whenever I run any malware in, in Linux based operating systems, that will affect only the particular folder itself, not entire system. Why? Because if I want to get a, another folder access, definitely I need a, I need a, permissions means I need the privileges. Here. So in Linux based operating systems, every time it won't provide that access. Every time you need to give the permissions only. So if you run any file, if you open any file for that, it requires the permission. Why? Because all the services will run at the kernel part. Are you getting my point? Yes, are you able to follow me? What I'm saying here?
So in Windows based scenarios, most of the services will run at the application itself only. So if you observe, whenever I run any virus in Windows based operating system, there is a chance for corrupting of all the system files. But when it comes to the Linux based operating system, most of the services will run at the kernel level. So whenever I run any software in the user level, it will only have access to that particular level itself. Means they, if they want access to these system calls or file systems or uh, virtual memories or even drivers, memory, all these things, they required the uh, privileges here. They required the privileges here. So that is what and why the Linux is more secure compared to Windows. Is that clear? Is that clear? Not it, It's not kind of a vulnerability or it's not kind of a, uh, what do you say? Or the graphical interface or it is easy to use these are the, not the reasons actually so most of the applications in windows base will use the services in user level itself so that is why there is a chance of running the malware and connecting the system files got it is that clear is that clear everyone yes all right Today, today we are going with uh, the hypervisor. So can anyone tell me what is a hypervisor? What are these hypervisors and what they do? Anyone? So is everyone having your laptops? Are you guys having your own laptops here with you guys? Just confirm me how many of you guys are having your laptops. No. Then how you're going to practice if you're not having laptops? How you're going to do the task? Hmm? Mobile. How can you run Linux? Or how can you run Windows mobile? I'll give you the task, right? We have to perform some hacking things. Hypervisor is a graphical related service. No. So hypervisors are nothing but here VMs. VMs are nothing but virtual machines. So these virtual machines helps you to run multiple guest operating systems on a host machine. Okay. So visual machine monitoring, you can say. So which is nothing but you can run multiple guest operating systems on a host machine. Means already you are running Windows, right? So again, at the same time, I want to run Linux machine. Is that possible for us to run a two operating systems at that time? Yes, we can run them with the help of hypervisors. Okay. And hypervisors are two types. One is type one hypervisor will be there and type two hypervisor will be there. Okay. So is there any guy who used this Linux before like VMs, VMware, anyone in this session? Like, are you like, is there anyone who used this Linux machines already? No. Right. Fine. I'll, I'll let you know. What is this hypervisor's differences? If, if anyone used the Linux machine before, You'll get an idea about this part. So I'll tell you. Like containers only, but there is difference between the containers and uh, uh, VMware. Yeah, right.
or it is not able to load. Just a second. Hmm. <clears throat> so here, if you observe, so these are the two types of hypervisors. One is a uh, hypervisor type one and type two. So if you see here in type one, we have directly, we have a hardware on that hardware. We are directly installed that VM. Imagine we have installed the VM. And in this VM running, guest one, or uh, like imagine this is Kali Linux we are going to install, and this is Windows 10 we are going to install. So this is type one scenario. And if you see the type two, here we have the hardware. On that hardware, we are running our Windows 10. <laughs> so we have a hardware. On that hardware, we are running, we, we are running the Windows 10. And in that Windows 10, we have installed the VM. And in that VM, we are running the guest operating systems like Kali and some Windows 7, imagine. So these are the two types. So in this, which type of hypervisor we guys are using? In this, which type of hypervisor we are going to use? Type 1 or type 2? And what difference you have found in this? Type 2. Yeah, we are going to use type 2. But what's the difference of type 1 and type 2? Any idea? So, like whoever used that uh, uh, Kali Linux before, if you observe, you won't get Wi Fi in your VMs. You see, I'm using, I'm using uh, VirtualBox and VMware, two virtual machines I'm having. So if you see, this is my Kali Linux. So when I open my Kali Linux, uh, if you observe, I don't have any any Wi-Fi. I won't get any Wi-Fi. Completely, it's a bridge connection, and it is a wired connection only. It's completely a wired connection. Why I'm not able to get the Wi-Fi in this? To get Wi-Fi, again, I, why I have to use some uh, external adapters here? Why not it is not giving direct Wi-Fi connection to my Kali machine? Well, because if you observe here in this point, the primary OS, whatever we are running, that is Windows 10, is already installed on the hardware. Means you have a Wi-Fi chipset. I have shown you. So we have only wi one Wi-Fi chipset on our motherboard that is already configured to your Windows 10. So already your host machine have direct access to the hardware. So you can, you can access that hardware resources. But the VMware is hosted on the host machine not on the hardware. We are not installing the VMware on the hardware. So if you are installing the VMware on the hardware, definitely you'll get all the resources of the hardware. But here host machine is installed on the hardware part. So whatever the hardware resources we have, that is already allocated to your primary host machine, which is nothing but your Windows 10, like this machine, right? So here now for these VMs, we'll have the limited access. You're getting my point? These VMs will have the limited access. Means you can't see the Wi-Fi or you can't be able to access your cam, webcam. Again, webcam is allocated to your primary OS. So like that, some of the services you can't be able to access hardware services, hardware resources here. But when it comes to the type one, directly we are installing the VM on the hardware. So VMware will have all the resources. Means these guest operating systems will have all the resources of hardware. They can run the Wi-Fi directly. They can have the server, everything. So mostly you can see this type one in the server level. In servers they use. So each uh, application use different operating system. Like for example, web server use, uh, Windows operating systems, email server use, uh, Kali operating system, or uh, application servers use some other operating system, CentOS. Like that we have different operating systems and different servers again. So to run each and every server with uh, uh, fully accessible hardware resources, they work with the type one hypervisor. 
okay so we have we are using type 2 so in type 2 we have a limited hardware resources remember that so that is why you are not getting any wi-fi in this part so if you see my win my kali linux here this is a type 2 so there is my primary os which is windows 10 in that windows 10 i have installed virtual box that is nothing but my vmware in this vmware i have installed kali linux so getting my point that is what type 2 so if you see my network interface here is wired connection not wireless and even if you if you if you open your terminal so we use terminals in kali i'll tell you what is this terminal all these things so if you go with the ip address so to check ip address we use if config in kali in kali operating system we use if and you can see it is ethernet connection and this is my wi-fi sorry my ip address so is there any wi-fi here in the interfaces <laughs> is there any wi-fi in these interfaces one is loopback interface as i told you 127 address will be default and another one is ethernet means wide connection so do you getting any wi-fi here double and zero interface in kali are you able to see that no right that means you don't have access of that wi-fi hardware resource so here we have limited hardware resources in this hypervisor is that clear everyone the type one and type two differences yes or no just confirm with that is that clear everyone type one and type two so simple type one where a bare metal you can say bare metal means the vm is directly hosting on the hardware means the vm will have direct access to the hardware resources and when it comes to the type 2 vm has installed on host machine and host machine have access to the hardware not vm directly got it so that's why we have a limited type or uh, sorry uh, limited hardware resources in type 2 clear so that is what hypervisors are so hypervisors are nothing but here or software that can run multiple virtual machines on a single physical memory and every virtual machine has its own operating system and applications right so the hypervisors allocates the underlying physical computing resources such as cpu memory uh, to individual virtual machines all these things clear right everyone about the hypervisor so now we'll try to install these things like how we can install the Kali machine or on our on our uh, primary OS. So we'll see that. So here I'm going to use two VMs. We have two variants of VMs here. One is virtual box. This is one VMware. Virtual machine, sorry. Another one is VMware. Again, in VMware, we have a workstation pro. which is for paid one. This is paid one, not for free. Another one is VMware player, which is for free, which is nothing but open source. And VirtualBox also free, which is open source. Okay. So what's the difference? See, uh, like many, many of you, many of you, many of them ask like, what's the difference between this uh, VirtualBox or VMware? You can say I'm using both of them. This is VirtualBox for Akil, and this is VMware, which is virtual machine. Sorry, uh, yeah, VMware Workstation Pro I'm using. This is a paid one, right? So what's the difference of these two is, if you observe here, we have network settings. Completely, you're getting a virtual network adapters in virtual box. Means you can configure a networks also here. You can configure your own networks here in this VMware. And apart from that, they are providing the snapshot. Can you see here the snapshot options? At the top, here you can see the snapshot options here in this part. So snapshots are nothing but, for example, till now I have configured everything on my Kali and I have set up to properly. So sometimes there is a chance for corrupting of the files. So or missing of the VM files, then it will corrupt the uh, this VM. So 
to overcome that scenario, we need to take a snapshot here. So means you're taking the image of that particular installed operating system. So whenever your system got corrupted, you can simply restore that file. Means it will start running from there itself. No need to download from the beginning, no need to configure that, nothing. Simply you can import that. So that is what a snapshot you can say here, All right? So you can take snapshot here, you can go with network settings, you can partition, you can get the BIOS option also in this VM. But when it comes to the v virtual box, so in this virtual box, you don't have the snapshot options here. And even you don't, you can't create your, you can't go with the custom network settings in this. Okay. So compared to VMware, it has a less features. Both are the same. Both are used to host the multiple operating system. So VMs, these are the softwares, so which helps us to run multiple guest operating systems on a host machine. So when it comes to the VMware, where it has a many features, you can see you can customize the networks, you can uh, stake the snapshot and you can create some isolated environment. We have all these things. But when it comes to the virtual box where it has an open source, so we have a limited resources in this. And uh, it is lightweight based scenario. Means uh, you can use virtual box for low, low configured pieces, low configured pieces. Got it? So that is a major difference, all right? So instead of player, I'll suggest go with workstation prepared one, but I'll give the key. We'll get for free only. Don't worry for that. I'll give the license key for you. It will be lifetime. You can go with that license key. So don't go with the player. So if you want to use VMware, go with workstation pro only or go with virtual box. And virtual box go with uh, like, you can use it less configured pieces. In less configured pieces, you can use this virtual box. Uh, if you are having a good configuration, you have a good RAM, good hard disk, all these things, I'll suggest go with workstation pro. So I personally suggest in this both use workstation pro only. You're getting my point? If you ask, if you ask me like which one we can use in a sense, if you have a good configuration PC, go with workstation pro only. Or if you have a less configured PC, sir, my system is i5 and having 8 GB. See, minimum requirement, i5, 8 GB RAM, 512 SSD and four or six core processors. So I'll tell you what is the configuration required. Intel, I personally suggest don't go with AMD. Instead of AMD, I suggest Intel only. And Intel, now we got an i9, but uh, depends on your budget. But minimum requirement is i5, 8 GB RAM, SSD should be there, and four or six, four, four core or six core. For uh, i5, I think you'll get four core processor only. Right, how you can check in a sense, for example, just go to your task manager, right click on your taskbar, just go to the task manager, if you see my system, this is my system. So if you see the performance, can you see the performance at the top? So in performance, can you see the CPU? So I'm using Intel or uh, Core i7, 959 generation, which is, and make sure base speed should be more than two gigahertz. If it is below two gigahertz, that will be a bit slow. It won't work in i3. In i3, it won't work. So i3, it's very slow. So it won't reach the requirements. So better go with i5 or i7 or i9, depends on your budget. But I suggest go with i7, even i5 also a bit slow. So base speed should be more than two gigahertz. And can you see the course, how, how much course I'm having? So mostly in i7, you'll get the six cores. In i5, you'll get four core processor and logical course will be too well. And make sure virtualization should be enabled. If this virtualization is disabled, you won't get the VMware. You can't install the VMware. So how you can enable this virtualization essence, you have to go to the BIOS and while you turn on your machine, just uh, enter F2 continuously. It will go, if it, it will take you to the BIOS. In BIOS, in secure boot, there will be virtualization. Just try to enable the virtualization. Okay. And uh, memory, RAM. So for my system, I got 8 GB by default, but later I installed uh, 16 GB also. Can you see I'm having two slots? If you take the, mouse or well, if you roll over the mouse on that slot used, can you see it's showing two slots? Is that visible for you guys? It's showing two slots there. 
one slot is 8 GB and another slot is I'm having 8, 16 GB means myself I have installed that. So by default I got 8 GB. So if you go to the uh, what uh, stores and if you purchase that definitely they'll fill the two slots and they'll give you one, one slot 4 GB, another slot 4 GB like that. You'll get the 8 GB. So better if you take online, they'll give one slot only. In that slot, uh, 8 GB will get and one more slot will be empty. So you can install extra memory also. RAM. You can increase your RAM easily if the slot is available. Right. And SSD I'm using 512 and I have HDD slot also. I have installed one T on TB. And yeah, make sure GPU should be there. Graphical graphics should be there. Wi-Fi is used. Right. So this is my configuration. So minimum requirement should be I5 HGB RAM 512 SSD or 4 or 6 core processor should be there. This is minimum requirement. If it is high three, yeah, uh, you can't run anything. It will be very slow. Okay. So why? Because this consumes your RAM and memory again, uh, like processor and memory. So you, it will be a bit slow in your systems. Right. So that is what you, you have to download, which is VirtualBox or VMware. So I personally suggest go with VMware Workstation Pro if you have a good configuration PC. No, sir, my system is already slow, a bit slow. So I want to do that. Let's just go with virtual box. But I personally prefer go with Workstation Pro. So how you can download this lesson? Simple. Just go to the Google. Uh, dual dependent in the sense every time, see, we use multiple tasks here. For example, I'm going to... Uh, See, imagine, imagine this is my Kali. Okay. This is my Kali and this is Metaspidable. So in this, uh, in, in upcoming session, we are going to practice on this uh, uh, system only. Like you need to go and install Windows 7. You need to install Metaspidable. And even you need to install some Kali pins. You're installing some multiple operating systems on your device. So if it is a, if it is in a boot, boot based scenario, live, you're saying live operating system that is actually. So at that time, how can you manage all these things at a time? You got my point? Either you can run Windows or you can you have to go with Kali. What if I want to run multiple operating systems again? Imagine this is attacker machine, Kali, and he's a victim, victim machine. So now if you want to attack from Kali to victim machine, how will you do that in that? So it don't happen, right? Again, you need to install VMware in that. Again, you need to run it, request more memory. So as a base pen drive, you can't do that. Right. You got you got that right. Ganesh. Right. So <clears throat> here, uh, if you want to download the virtual box, simply you can go to the uh, Google and type uh, V box. You can type V box also. It is nothing but virtual box, which was developed by the Oracle. So you can see. So you can just visit this website. Just go to the downloads. And here you can download the virtual box. Okay. So that you can host it. I'll, I'll share this uh, file with you. So in this in this document, I have uh, given everything. Like, uh, if you want to download the VMware Workstation Pro, you can go with this link, and it will ask the keys at the end, license keys. In this three, any one of the key you can use. Okay, and if you want to download the virtual box, you can go with this link and download the virtual box. And once you download, see normal installation, you download next, 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 install that and open that, and then make sure to download the Kali first. You need to install the WinRAM. WinRAR application means uh, the Kali Linux will be in VM file. Sorry, the, the Kali Linux will be in, in in zip format, which is in RAR format. So to extract that RAR file, we are going to install some extraction tools like WinRAR. Okay. 
So I'll share this top command chat box. Everyone make sure to download that. Yeah, I have shared that text file in the chat box. Everyone try to download that text file. Surya, your PC is i7 and 12 GB RAM and which one is the best? Sir? You have given only one option and saying which one is the best among what? I told you minimum requirement. If it is more than this also, that's fine. That's good. But minimum requirement, i5, 8 GB RAM, 512 SSD and 4 or 6 core processors. And base speed should be more than 2 GB. Base speed. So you can go to this virtual box and you can download the a Windows file here. And if you want to go with workstation, go with VMware Workstation Pro. Just type VMware Workstation Pro. And you can see a website like IN here. Okay, so just visit this website. So I think it is running version 17. So if you scroll down, as I told you, so it's a paid one. They'll give only 30 days of trial for you for free base. But I have given keys for you already in the document. So you can use that keys and you can get the lifetime VMware for free. Okay, so just download the Windows 17 Pro for Windows base. If it is Linux, go with Linux. I Means, uh, if you want to install the VMware in Linux operating systems, you have to install this one. So, but we are doing on Windows system. My, mine is Windows system only. This is Windows system only. So in this window system, I'm going to download VM. So I need Workstation Pro for Windows only. So now just click on this. So it will start downloading the file. Can you see? So make sure just download that and install normal. It is, it is a normal installation only once you download it. Okay. So just download that, install that. So at the end, it will ask you for the keys license keys okay so here it will show you like this so it will ask you for license key after installation at the end or you click finish now at the time it will ask you for the license key so i have given that license key in the document So I have given the license key in this document. So I can copy any one of the key and give that key for that. Okay, so just paste that key here. Click on OK. So it's already there for me. It's already licensed one. I have installed that. So you can see it's already licensed. You can, you can go with that. It will work in your system. Or with keys are not working, you can go with this website, Apni. So why I'm not giving this website directly is, actually this website contain the malwares and some adwares will be there. So at the time, it will be a bit difficult for you. So that's why I'm not giving this website. If you want, you can go with this website also, but it contains malwares, remember. So here you will get the keys.
So here you will have actually keys. It's about station pro. So you can copy with these keys also. Okay. So it is not showing here, but yeah, we'll show you. All right. So you can enter the key at the end and you can run that. Okay. So that is how you can install the VMware. So it's a normal installation only. Just download that files, go with next, 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 and install the VMware or go with virtual box. Any of that you can choose. So once you're done with the installation of VMware or VirtualBox, now go with Kali website. So just visit the Kali.org. Or I'll just Google it about the Kali. So when you visit, it shows you the Kali website, Kali.org. Just click on that. Just go with the download. So in this, most of them do the mistake here itself. We are installing the Kali on, on, on your primary OS or in VMware, where we are doing this. Anyone? Can you tell me? Are we installing the Kali Linux on your primary OS or you, are run, you want to run that on a VMware? In VM, right? So when you go with VM, in this two, which one you'll select? This one only, right? So when you go with the installer option is, remember, this is ISO format, image format. So when we need to go with this installer option is, when you want to run these Kali Linux on your primary OS means you are removing the Windows 10 and you're going with Windows, uh, sorry, are you like you're removing this Windows 10 and you want to install Kali Linux as your primary OS, as your primary OS. At that time, download this installer image. Got it? So ready my point? So when you want to go with the, see, you can do this one also on your VM, but I personally suggest don't go with that. So go with the uh, with the primary OS basis, this installer. And if you want to install the Kali Linux on VM, then download the VM file. Image file will be there, VM. And you can see the difference. Just now we discussed type 1 and type 2 scenario. So mine is type 2 scenario. And even you guys are doing also type 2 scenario only. So in type 2, as I told you, limited direct access to the hardware and higher system requirements. And it provides some isolated environment, snapshot functionality, and customized Kali Linux you can do in virtual machines. And when it's the installer image, this is bare metal we call. We call this as a bare metal. Means you're directly installing this operating system on a hardware. At that time, we call this as a type 1 hypervisor or a bare metal. And this one, we are running on the virtual image. Okay. So just go with this VM. Just click on this virtual image and just try to read this. So here they have provided some default credentials, Kali and Kali, remember that. And here you can see some of the hypervisors you have Windows Base and QVME. Better than that, you can go with VMware and VirtualBox. So for example, you're going with VMware example. So just simply click on that. Can you see it's in zip format? Can you see it's in zip format? So most of the systems are, are not having the extraction software. So to extract that zip file, I suggest you go with WinRAR download. So try to download the WinRAR. Try to download the WinRAR. Got it? So WinRAR is a kind of extraction tool. So just go with, click this. So it will start downloading. Install that. So next, next, normal installation only. Right? So, why? Because uh, whatever the file you're downloading, Kali, is in zip format only. So to extract that file, you need to download a extraction tool, which is WinRAR. I suggest you that. Got it, everyone? Clear? Right. So once you downloaded the file, 
once you downloaded the file for example uh, it, it, when you download it will be in download folder so better to copy it somewhere in your system so actually uh, i have stored all my operating system in a separate folder in separate disk and you can see here i'm having a vmware okay even your virtual box will be also in 7c and this is image file this is image file of kali so when you want to remove the windows 10 and if you want to run kali as a primary then you can go with is for format but you are doing that on the vmware so try to download the vm files only directly so now once you download this zip file make sure you have to extract that many of them what they do is without extracting they'll try to host that file so is that possible without extracting that file you can host it on vmware file extract cheyakundane manam vmware lo install cheyagalthama cheyalem actually even if you see here if i open the vmware so you have three options in this one is create a new virtual machine or open a virtual machine and connect to a remote server in these three options which one i need to select to uh, host that vm file in these three options which one i need to select through host to host that kali linux anyone ipudu vm download chesan kada like i have downloaded the kali vm so which one i need to select create a new vm or open a vm so remember create a new virtual machine when will you use this is when we are going to use this create a new vision is when the file is not belongs to vm when the file is not belongs to vm ante example if you take this is iso file we have is this a vm file is this a vm file or a image file it's image file right so now you need to make this image file into vm file then you need to click on create a new virtual machine but i have downloaded the vm file only you can see this is vm where i have extracted that already so i have downloaded the vm file only so you need to go with open a virtual machine means already it's a vm file already it's a vm file can you see when i click on open the vm is it showing any zip file here or also iso files here is it showing the zip file here hmm so go with all files it will show you but when i go with a supported file is it showing that uh, zip files no means directly you can't import the zip files here so first what you have to do is you need to extract that file and make it a folder once you extract it just open vmware and in open vmware you can select that file so can you see and click on open that will be selected now getting my point so when we use create a new mach virtual machine when the file is not belongs to vm if it is not a vm image then you can go with create a new virtual machine if the file is a vmware file already then go with open a virtual machine you got the difference is that clear everyone when you need to use create a new virtual machine and when we use the open virtual machine simple so if the file adi vm ke sambandhinchindi kaado appudu create a new virtual machine okay let me download chesina file a vmware file aithe go with open virtual machine got it all right what about guys is that clear everyone so now what you have to do is once you download that kali file just try to extract that file okay so imagine this is my file so just right click for you it will show you oh, open vmware or uh, winrar open in vm winrar then go with that in that it will show you the extract to kali folder here so click on extract to kali for me it is already created for me it's already the folder what extracted here okay so now i'll simply open the vmware and click on open virtual machine and i'll go to that folder where it is extracted and i'll select that file <coughs> can you say it will show you only one file 
right so just click on open now so can you see it's opening the file directly so now as i told you the default credentials will be username is kali password is kali and make sure network settings you need to configure here so make it to the nat especially bridge only so i'll explain you what is this nat what is bridge all these things i'll explain you so before that is that clear everyone how to host the kali in vmware is that clear everyone how to host the kali in vmware yes or no so simple just go to the google download the kali image file and try to extract that file then open your vmware import that file simple okay so if anyone facing issues please let me know next session we'll do that again okay it's very important for you guys to host the machine right so after hosting after hosting the same same in virtual box also in virtual box uh you have to go with uh, import or else go with add only directly click on add go to the if it is if it is virtual box i am telling you go to the os uh, virtual box file so select that virtual box file okay and click on open so it will be the same like a vmware okay after hosting the kali you have to remember you have to do three important things after hosting the kali machine on vmware or virtual box you need to perform three important things here the first thing is before starting with the kali make sure the network settings so here you can see we have nat bridge and host only scenario we have nat bridge and host only we have remaining are the different things so what is this nat what is this bridge and what is this host only why you are selecting the bridge check why can't i use nat here so i'll explain you about this thing. okay so what is this nat what is this bridge and what is this host only remember it's very 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 important for you to uh, understand these network settings here okay so imagine this is my router this is my router so to this router i have a host machine host or else you can take a system a so in this system a i have installed the vmware i have installed the vmware okay so in this vmware i'm using the kali just now we installed the kali and uh, we are going with another os which is windows 7 okay so now imagine i have connected this kali to the bridge network okay so you yeah, just go this bridge and it at once select allow all and make it to bridge just click on bridge okay so what happened when i connect to the bridge is even even this connected with b and even you have another devices like c okay so what happening when i connect this kali machine to the bridge is this kali machine is getting the network from primary host you're getting my point the Kali machine is getting the network from primary host means whatever the network the primary host is using the same network the Kali will get is that getting are you getting my point so when I connect this Kali machine to the bridge the Kali will get the network whatever the more primary host it means you're getting the network from the primary network so now tell me can I able to connect with this device or can I able to ping this device can I can I do that or not 
sun no so something imagine i have connected to this kali imagine let me go with kali and kali okay Let me go with the uh, IF config here. So what is my IP? 192.168.0.120. Now let me take my Windows IP. My Windows IP, which is IP config. 192.168.0.188. Now tell me, are they both in same network? Are they both in same network? Or they both are in different network? Are they both in same network or different network? Same network, right? So now can I able to ping them? Let me ping 192.168.0.1.0.20, right? So am I getting the response? Means I can able to reach this device. And even I can reach to any device in this network. Means now Kali Linux can able to access to all these devices within the same network. Why? Because whatever the network these devices are getting, the same network the Kali also getting. This is because of connecting to the bridge. So when I want to hack the devices within the network, you should connect the Kali Linux to the bridge. So you should be in the same network. As I told you, if I want to attack a device, I should be the same network. So means my device also should be in the same network. Then only I can perform the attack. So now tell me, uh, if I want to attack this call, uh, this machine B, is it possible when I connect to the bridge? Can I perform the attack on the machine? Can I? Yes or no? Now using the Kali, can I attack the device, the other device which is in my network? I can do that, right? But when I connect to the bridge. What if I connect to the, uh, sorry, what if I connect to the NAT? There is another network called NAT. So now can I able to perform the attack? So again, for NAT, you are getting the network from the host machine, not from the primary. No, not from the primary network. You are getting the network from the host machine. So now you can see IP address is 192.168.250.10. And this is having 192.168.0.188. Now, are they both in same network? Are they both in same network? No. So now tell me, can I able to perform the attack on this machine now? Can I able to perform the attack on that machine now? I can't perform the attack. Why? Because it is in different network. Same host only also. So host only in the sense it will create its own network here. Okay. So like that, we have different types of networks. So depends on your target, make sure your network connection. You got that? Or is this bridge NAT and host only now? So now, now Kali is in, now Kali is in bridge network. Now I want to attack this metaspreadable machine. And this metaspreadable also in bridge. Is that possible now? They both are in same network. Now tell me, is attack is possible? Yes. What if Metasplatable is in NAT and Kali is in bridge? Is that possible now? Metasplatable is in NAT network and Kali is in bridge network. Now tell me, is that possible for me to attack? Actually, no. You can't attack that. Why? Because two different networks. Okay. So that is what the first thing you need to remember about the network connections. So while performing the attack, make sure is your target in the same network or different network. If it is the same network, that's fine. Or you need to get the network access first. This is first important thing. Next important thing is you need to open the Kali machine. Okay. So I'll turn off how to open. I'll tell you. So just Select the Kali after hosting. 
here in virtual box you don't need any key or nothing in workstation pro only you need the key and just start the machine here you can see the start option so once you click on start it will start the machine So if you observe, it is a bit slow. See, even I'm using i7 also. Imagine. So why? Because nowadays the VMware is using more, more processor and more memory. So get a good configured PC. So you have a default credentials, Kali and Kali. So once you use that credentials, log into that Kali machine. So they have given a default credentials. So now you logged in as a user. So Kali is one of the user in this Linux machine. Okay. So what's the difference between the uh, admin? Admin is here in Kali we call it as a root. So what is the difference between the root and a user? Root is nothing but admin. Imagine in Windows we have admin, right? We'll run some application as run as administrator. If you, if you observe. So what's the difference between the root and user? What is the difference between an admin and a normal user? What is the difference? Hmm? Exactly. Admin can access anything. He has more accessibility. When it comes to the user, he has a limited access. He needs permissions every time. He can only view that file. He can't uh, modify, he can't delete that file. You getting my point? So we logged in as a user level, not an admin level. So if you observe, uh, uh, this is the menu, same like your Windows, you have start menu, right? You have start menu in Windows, right? Same like that, you have a menu in Kali also. These are the menu and these are the applications. You can see these are all the tools, hacking tools. You can see these are all the hacking tools we have. And here, this is the file manager. Like you have a file manager, right? Same like your file manager only. So when you click, so we have file manager, right? This one in Windows. In Windows, we have file manager. Same like that, we have a, a file manager in Kali also. Here also you can click on open, right? So how we have Windows C as a default system folder, like that we have file system here. So your task for the next session is make sure I need a brief folder information in file system. What this bin folder contain, what this boot folder contain, what this dev folder, EDC folder, home folder, what these contents you need to tell me. So the task for your, for, for your next session is make sure everyone go through these file systems in Linux. Okay. So can you see there is a root folder? Can you able to see that? So when I try to access what it is saying, Permission denied means as a normal user, you don't have access to the root privileges here. Means you can't able to access the root folders. Means you can't able to modify the system files also. So as a normal user, you don't have access to modify or to delete or to extract that files. Only you can view that system files. Are you getting my point? Right. And default browser, we use Firefox in Kali will have a default browser web application, which is Firefox. We won't use any Chrome here. Firefox as a default. And this is the terminal. So whatever the activity you are going to do, that can be done in terminal only. So just open the terminal and you can zoom in the terminal and you can see the files here. 
can go with new tab like uh, preferences in preferences you can see all the shortcut keys you can learn shortcuts of this uh, uh, terminal you can run them so behavior right so right so like that you can see the preferences everything so now this is the terminal part so what's the difference between the root and user in the sense for example when i run this command apt get update let me update my system so when i try to run this command what it is saying permission denied permission denied permission denied means as a normal user you can't able to access to the system files here even you can't able to update or upgrade your system also. So what do you require every time? Sudo. So what is sudo here? Sudo is nothing but super user do. Means whatever the super user do, super user in the sense root do, that you can do. So when I use sudo apt get update. So case sensitive, Kali Linux is a case sensitive. Means if there is an uppercase, you need to give the uppercase. If it is a lowercase, you need to give the lowercase. So it's very important to remember that. So now, can you see it is asking for the password? This session will be for 15 minutes. Now you can see it started updating the file. All right. Oh, default it as disabled. Okay. So now sudo will work every time. So now you can see this upgrading the system files. Can you see? Means before I need to mention sudo every time. Right. So it is a bit difficult for me to run sudo every time or even I'm not getting the system file access. So how we can get the root access here? So simple. To get the root access. So the second important thing is you need to get the root access. So for that, first you need to enter into the sudo su or sudo iphone i enter when you type this Kali. Now, where are you? In root. Right. And I'll, I'll tell you one thing here. Uh, can you see when, when you logged in as a user level, it shows the symbol indicates with the dollar. Can you see that? And when you log in with the root, it indicates with the hash. So it's 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 important for you guys to remember these uh, indications, dollar and hash. Why? Because uh, in in upcoming sessions we are going to do some exploitation on Linux based operating systems. So at the time there it won't mention like you logged in as a user or you logged in as a root. They won't mention anything there. So just by seeing the symbols, you need to tell that what kind of access you got. Just by seeing these. Uh, uh, special characters you need to tell that what kind of access you got so when it is a hash what level of access you got when it is in hash what level of access you got a root level when it is in dollar user level just remember these indications it will help you a lot right now i'm inside the root right so just simply let me go with passwd enter so just type whatever the password you want to keep. It won't show you, just you need to type that. But can you see my password is updated successfully. So now just go at the top here at this point and click this. It will show you log out. Just log out from that machine. And now log in as a root. So make sure this is the second important thing you have to remember. So try to get root access means every time try to log in as a root only. Don't log in as a Kali and Kali. So why I'm telling you that in the sense, uh, whenever you want to configure any file into your system, you need to get the root access. So every time you can't run that sudo, right? It will be a bit difficult. So better get the root access itself and log into the root every time. So now if I, if I, if I open my terminal, what level of access I got? What level of access I got here? Root, right? So now, now even if you go to the file systems, open the file manager, go to the file systems. Can you see the root folder? Can I able to access root folder? I can. 
I can able to access this root folder. You getting my point? Right. So that is how even just by running this command like uh, apt get update. I can do that simply. So is it saying permission denied now? So am I mentioning any sudo command before? No. Right. So the second important thing, first important thing is network settings. Before turning on Kali, make sure the network settings. And second important thing is get the root access. And third important thing is update and upgrade your system. It's very important. See, it's downloading all the packages which are required for the applications in your system. So first update and go with upgrade next. So these are the two commands you need to run, run after installing the Kali machine in your system. Even I updated last time though I'm getting the updates. So every time you, you will get updates in this machine. So make your system up to date. Is that clear? Is that clear, everyone? The three important things what I have done here. Any doubts? Is there any doubts? Just let me know. Done. So first make sure the network settings. Second, get the root access. And third, go with the update and upgrade. So make your system is do that after getting the root access. So once you got the root access, open your terminal, run, run the update and upgrade scenario. Got it? All right. So shall I continue with the commands now? So how to root in the sense, simple. Uh, if you get the root access now, I'll show you. For example, you logged in as a Kali and Kali, imagine. So if you open your terminal, there you need to type sudo, let me go with Kali now. Hmm. Okay, so imagine now you're in Kali, logged in as Kali. So just by running sudo iPhone i, you'll enter into the root, right. So in root, just use a command called passwd, passwd. So just by running this command, it will ask you to keep the password, a new password. So just type that new password here. It won't show you, just type that two times and enter. So now your password got updated successfully. So once your password got updated successfully, make sure just log out from this machine and log in with the root. So root username will be the root only. Okay. Is that clear? All right. So is that clear for everyone? How to install the Kali Linux in VMware and what is VMware? Everyone just confirm me that. Yes. So no doubts for you. So my personal suggestion for you guys is uh, uh, start doing some bash scripting. Try to start learning bash scripting. Bash scripting. My personal suggestion. So try to learn 
what is bash scripting what is scripting then go with uh, try to go with some bash scripting it will be very easy and uh, see what are the file systems we have so what are the file systems we have okay and how how these things work what the file systems contain everything okay so this is a task for the next session for you all right and learn some basic linux commands okay kali linux commands the basics all right so i'll go with some basic commands now okay so whatever i left go with that part okay so the first command i suggest you even you can make this kali into the windows based system means you can convert this kali uh, interface as a windows interface so we have a command call kali undercover mode can you see the command kali undercover so when i run this command so if you observe your kali will completely turn as a windows based operating system okay it is updating So next task is uh, go with the file systems and Linux based commands. Just try to learn the Linux commands and start learning some bash scripting. Okay. That is your task. It is updating once it's done. We'll go with the Kali and the board. Mm, it is updating. Fine, uh, I can try the cut Kali and record more. So shall I, shall I continue with the comments now? Is that okay for you guys? Yes, okay. Just a
All right. So can you see my Kali Linux interface look like same as Windows? Can you see that? Is that visible for you? Same. It will like Windows only, but like you can see the root folder. So in this root folder, everything. So that is what under cover mode actually. So to get back to the Kali again, you can use the same command Kali under cover. When you type this again, it will back, it will take back to the Kali interface again. So that is how the under cover mode works. But yeah, coming back to the Linux basic commands. So first I'll go with the command called pwd, which is nothing but a print working directory. So this pwd will give you in which directory exactly we people are. So I'm in, I'm currently I'm in root directory. So currently I'm in root directory. So before root directory, is there any other directories we have? Directories are nothing but here folders. So one of folders on top Kali Linux law. Oh, sorry, uh, Windows Lumen of folders on them, Kali lo directories on them. Right. So, my present working directory is root directory. Why? Because it's very important to know the directories in this particular Linux based systems. Why? Because when I download any file, in which directory it is downloading, you need to know. And how to change from one directory to another directory also, it's very important. Right. So, for example, let me go with ls. LS, LS is nothing but listing. Listing of the directories or files, what it contains. So imagine ex where am I now? In root. In root folder, what are the directories we have? These are all the directories we have. So is there any directory before root? Is there any directory before root? Root kanna mundi inkote is directory on the and root is starting directory. So what do you think? What is the starting directory in, in Kali Linux? So if you, if you open this file systems, sorry, file manager, can you see the file system? Is that visible for you? Actually, this was the starting directory in Kali Linux. And these directory contain all the system files. And can you see the path, what it contains? The forward slash can you see that it's a forward slash so this was the starting path of in this you have the root folder can you see in this we have the root folder means currently my terminal is in this path can you see the path here slash root so means before root what is the path we are having what is the path we are having file system we are having file systems. So now from this root folder to this user folder, I need to change. Means from root directory to user directory, I need to change the path. So what is the command here? CD dot dot. Means it will go one, one folder backward. When I enter this, now currently where am I now? I'm in I'm in root or file system. Where am I now? In file system. Right. So now go with ls and can you see the files? Got it. So again, if I want to enter into the root, cd root. So now where am I? In root folder. Means cd is nothing but change directory. So you can go with cd dot dot. It will go one directory backward. Means before where am I now? Root. Means one one directory backward in the sense where I'm going to be in file system folder. Okay. 
So that is how you can change the directory. Or you can give the path directory, means CD, no need to go back to the user file system from there to the CD user, from there to the again, like that. So directly you can give that. What is the starting folder? As I told you, file system. So file system indicating with the forward slash. And where is this user folder? In file system only. So directly you can give that path. Enter. So can you see directly I have changed my directory to means previously if you observe cd dot dot means from root to file system I have changed again from file system to cd user I need to type. So means I have to go back to the file system from file system to user like that you need to do. But you can use if you know the path exactly where that folder is. If you know the exact path of that folder, you can give that directly here itself. So can I go with CD root directly now? Will it work? Will it work this command now? Can I directly jump into the root folder by using this command called CD root? Can I? Will it work? Is it possible for me to change the directory from CD root? Will it work? No, why? Why it won't work, Ganesh? Yes, are you there? Is it possible for me to change the directory from the user to root directly? So actually it won't. Why? Because if you observe here, when I run this command, it says no such file or directory. Means if this root folder inside this user, then it will work. But root folder is not inside the user folder. It is inside the file system. Means you need to give cd slash, means the, the file system folder, and go with the root. Enter. It will work. You getting my point? So that is how you need to change the directory from one path to another path. Okay. Right. So that is what PWD and LS is nothing but listing out the files. So if you don't know about any command, for example, LS you're typing, it is giving some content, but what exactly LS do? What are the options it has? If you want to know more information about LS, you can use a command called man and give what command information you want ls so man is nothing but here manual for example when you purchase a product from online or anything anywhere like you'll get the manual right how to use that product what the specifications it has same here also how to use this command and uh, what what options what specifications it has to check that we use man here so when i run this command it will give a detailed information about this command. LS is nothing but listing the directory content. How to use syntax. So LS option and file name you can give. And here we have some other options. iPhone A. It do not ignore the entry starting with the dot. iPhone capital A. It do not implies, imply the dot and dot dot. So iPhone B, iPhone L, iPhone R. Like that you have different uh, things. If you see iPhone L we have. So it use long listing format. Right. So let's see. LS iPhone A. So previously, just I have given LS. What information it is giving? Only the folders what we have. But when I give iPhone A here, it gives the hidden files also. Can you see there are some hidden files which start? If any file or folder start with the dot, will be hidden. All right. So that files are also it is showing from. So if you see with normal LS, it is showing only the files which we have. <laughs> LS iPhone A. It shows what are the files, means even it is showing the hidden files also. And what if I go with ls iPhone L here, long listing file I told you. So here iPhone D represents the directory. For example, let me create a text file, t-o-u-c-h, akil.txt. So to create a file, to create a file, the command is touch, enter. Now go with ls iPhone L. So if you observe, is there any D in front of this R? Is there any D in front of this R? 
No, that means it's a file. So when it is a file, it indicates with the iPhone, blank iPhone. But if it is a directory, means if that is a folder, it indicates with the D. And what is this R, W, R, R, R? Actually, it's a permission to this file. And it is root owner. And when it is created, what is the file size? This is a file size, it's zero MB. And FB, uh, sorry, Feb 26 at this time. So according to this timing, it is like that. So what is this RWRR in the sense? It's a permission actually. So it's a permission means, for example, you see here. So total we have nine characters in that read, write, and executive means R, W, X. So three persons will be involved. So the first three are user means owner of the file. And next three are group, means the file is sharing with few amount of people. And R is nothing but this last one is others, means apart from means the guys who are not belongs to group and user, the remaining people will be there, right? We call them as others, means now for file which whatever I have created, the akil.txt is having read write permission to the user, read permission for the group, and read permission for the others means only user is having read and write means read in the sense you can read the file you can view and even you can modify delete or edit whatever you want you can do if it is a program you can run that file right so these are the three options we have right so the first three categories belongs to user and next three categories are belongs to group and next three categories are belongs to the other okay so this is the permissions what this file is having. So why I'm not having executive permission in the sense this is not a program. It's only text file. So if it is a program, definitely for user, means the guy who created this file will have the executive permission. For example, for group also, I want to give the right permission. For group, what permissions we have exactly right now? Only read permission. I want to give a right permission. So I'm going to use a command called ch mode and g which is nothing but group plus in the sense adding what permission write permission to which file a kill dot txt so now go with can you see did you get the right permission now So previously we don't have any right permission, but now we are having the right permission. Can you see that? Right. So how in the sense, just using that uh, the group, it's a group. As I told you, it's a user. You can mention as a U. It is a group. Mention as a G. If it is a other, mention as O. Okay. So by giving that, you can add the permission. So here we have three indications. One is. Minus minus in the sense what it will do when I use this command what it is going to do When I use minus what it is going to do It will try to remove the permission if you observe here It has removed that permission When I go with Plus it is going to add the permission can check that is that permission added right yes what if i go with equal to can you tell me what happened what happened when i use equal to is this the same as plus hmm? It is adding the permission and it is removing the existing one. So previously it has read permission also, if you remember. So when I use equal to symbol, it will add the permission and remove the existing permissions. When I use plus symbol, it won't remove the existing permission. For existing permission only, it will add the permission. 
regarding my point, the difference here, when you use a plus symbol means adding, it won't do any changes to the existing one. It just add the permission, whatever I'm giving. But when it comes to the equal to part, it removes the permission for the existing one and adding the permission. So previously we have read and write. So I'm giving the right permission. It is removing the existing one, which is write permission, read permission. So that is what equal to do here. Okay. So even it indicates with the numerical format also. You can check that in the Google. All right. So that's how you can add the permissions to the files. Is that clear? So ch mode is nothing but the change mode. And if you want to add permission for the user, now I'll go with x permission. I'll go with plus x permission. If I want to add permissions to read, write, execute, and for others, it's only read permission. Enter. Okay, here double equal to happen now. Make sure check that. And you need to give the file also. I forgot to give the file. To which file I need to change the permission. So now you can check that. So for user, we have executive permission added. And for uh, G, read, write, executive permission is added. And for others, it is read permission only. Right? So you can see uh, when, it, when you give the executive permission, the color has been changed to the green. Right? So blue indication is folders. White indication is a file and uh, green indication is a program a script it may be in, right so this is how you can give the permissions using a command called ch mode is that clear everyone yes no say something clear right so now to create a file what is the command i told you touch right you can use touch add.txt so it created a file so go and check with ls so is that hack.txt file is created yes so touch hack.txt file is created so now to create a file we use touch command now to edit that file you can use vi when when you can use i suggest go with nano nano will be more easy for you to use that command so nano file name Sorry, it's hack.txt. Enter. So now you can type whatever you want. You can write the code or you can do anything. Whatever you want, you can write them. Okay. So to save that, control X will ask you to save the buffer data, Y, and enter. So now check the hack.txt. So is that content added to this file or not? To check, you're going to use cat. You're going to use cat hack.txt. Can you see? Whatever I typed, you can see. So here I used a touch command to create a file. I use nano command to edit the file. And I use cat command to read the file. To create touch, to edit nano, to read cat. So create file, edit file, and read file and to remove that rm hack.txt go with ls is there any hack.txt file now is there any hack.txt file no right so that is how you can see and using the cat itself you can do all these three so okay, cat command okay to use just one in change like a uh, uh, cat just give greater symbol hack.txt enter. So now you can type whatever you want. Means here only I'm creating the file. Here only I'm editing the file. And just at the end, what you need to do is control C, control plus C. You need to type, it will break the command. Control C is break the command. Now you can see hack.txt. So file is created, read the content using same hack cat cat command. So is that the one which I have typed here? So means using the greater than symbol, you're creating the file, you're editing the file, and you're saving that. Got it? 
So simply by using one command, see there are multiple commands for every activity. So don't think we'll have only single command for that activity, multiple commands you can use. So that is how. So to remove and delete or same or not. Yeah, same only. That is what delete. Remove means delete only. Right. So rm file name hack.txt. So now to create a file, you use touch. What if I want to create a folder here? Folder. I want to create a folder here. MKDIR. Let me create Akil. So go with LS. Can you see a folder created with the name Akil? So now I want to copy this text file to this Akil folder. So to copy that file, CP, what file you want to copy? Akil.txt to which folder? Akil folder. Enter. Now go with LS. Go to CD Akil, Akil folder, Kalandi. Just see LX. So can you see, is that file copied? Is that file copied? Is that file copied now? Yes. So if I want to move the file. RM. Sorry. If I want to move the file, same. Just let me go back. So ls so now i want to move the file mv which file you want to move akil.txt and which folder akil folder enter go with ls now can you see is there akil.txt no so this akil.txt has been moved to this akil folder so copy is cp move is mv now i want to remove this directory what is the command to remove the directory what is the command RM, what it is saying? No, I'm not to. I'm not saying change the directory. I want to remove. Remove means delete the directory. See, RM is for files. Remember, when you use RM, that is for files. Okay, not for directory. See, directories and files are not same. Okay. So if it is a text file or any program file, then you can use RM. Okay. So it's saying when I use RM, Akil, what it, why it is saying it cannot remove? Why? Because it is a directory. So RM is not for the directory. Okay. Someone said RMDIR. Okay. Let me go with RMDIR, Akil, enter. So what it is saying? See, uh, you may get many errors while using Kali. I tell you that. You get many errors. So try to learn some troubleshooting here. Troubleshooting is very, very, very important in this field. Okay. So means whenever you get any error, so try to copy that error. Just go to the Google, copy that, paste it, find the solution. That is what troubleshooting. Okay. So RMDIR you can use. But it is saying that directory is not empty. Why? Because in directory, we have copied a file, right? If it is an empty directory, yeah, RMDIR will work. But the directory is not empty here. It contains some files. So at that time, you need to go with recursor. Means RM, iPhone R, which is nothing but the recursor. So recursor is nothing but here. Uh, whatever the file it contains, inside the file, if it is having any other files, it will remove from that. Right, and go with a kill. So now, are you getting any error here? No, that means the command executed successfully. So now, is that file deleted? Yes. So, and see when you, you can get to know about RM command, what it do. Man. So RM is nothing but remove the files and directories. And you can see the optionals. So here you can see all these options. So I told you R. So what is R? Someone said D, it's only remove the empty directories. So remove directories and their contents recursively means insert directory. If it contains any folders or files, it will also remove them. Got it? So that is what RM. So 
This is how you can create the file, delete the file, read the file, create the directory, copy the file, move the file, and remove the directory. Got it? So these are the some basic commands you have. And if you want to check the IP address, the command is ifconfig. So not ipconfig, ifconfig. So this is your MAC address, and this is your IP address. And if you want to check the gateway, you can use route iPhone n now it will give the gateway ip address 0 .1. in windows it will give the default gateway directly but in kali you need to get that route iphone n gateway and you have some other commands like locate so locate dot nsc for example i want to find some locate dot nsc files so you can use locate it will find all the files which are related with dot nsc or not only that, if you want any file, okay, I want JPEG files. So it will show you all the JPEG files inside the system and it will give the path also. It is in user, share, file day, server. Like in this path, you have the JPEG file. So like that, you can use locate command, right? And if you want to run two commands at a time, for example, locate NSC. So in that, I'm getting some VMware, SSL, all this SSL or SMB, SNMP scripts we have. So I need only SMB scripts here, example. So simply I use a pipe command. Can you see the pipe command? This is pipe you can say. And I'm using global expression, which is script. And I'm going with only SMB. Means it just give me the SMB scripts only now. Or if I want FTP scripts, it will give me the FTP scripts only. Means here locate is different command and grip is different command. To run two different commands at a time, you're going to use pipe command. So to run two different commands at a time in Kali, you can go with pipe command here. Got it? Is that clear? Right, so grip is try to find the patterns. Can you see the red indications? Means it is giving the pattern here. Exact pattern that is what clip you can say. Look at it is locating the file, whatever the file you're looking for. Right? So, like that, uh, to unzip the file, unzip is the command we have. Right? Or uh, you have history. When you type history, it will give all the commands what we have run till now. So, till now, whatever the commands I have run, it will show you all the commands from the beginning to now. From the beginning to now, whatever I have commands written, entered, that commands will be stored in this. All right. So like that, we have many different uh, commands in this. So these are the some basic commands. OK. So like there are many commands you can see. If you go on like versions, you can get the net score. So we'll discuss about them while using the Kali line itself. All right. So these are the some basic commands what we discussed till now. Is that clear, everyone? Like how to change the path, how to give the permission to the file, how to create the file, how to edit the file, how to read the file. Is that clear for you guys? Right. So your task for the next session is like, go with what are the file systems, what is file systems and what are the folders it contain, and Linux commands. And everyone try to create a user see how to create a user in Kali. And for that user, you need to create the password also. That is your task. So this is your task for the next session, everyone. And you'll have an exam also, prepare and come. So whatever the topics we cover till now on networking, you'll have an exam. So prepare and come, everyone. OK. Is that clear? Yes, no, say something. Right, so just, just note down the task every. Right. 
So if you have any doubts, yeah, you guys can ask. Or else, yeah, you guys can leave. Thank you. Thank you for attending the session. Have a great day, guys. See you in the next session. So exam on this thing, like uh, networking part, complete. Uh, comments, uh, I don't have any document. Just Google. Google is a best source. Like if you go to the Google, there are many websites you can find. So just type Linux basic commands. You'll get many commands. So in that, the most important commands you can see. Top 23, top 50 commands. So just just go through with this part. I can share the document, but yeah, you can go with this. Contains only this. So these are all the commands. There are many other commands you can see, but yeah, some of the basic commands you can see. We'll, we'll go on discussing. We have many things to do with Linux, right? So I'll go in with that. So why I'm using Windows 10 the sense? Uh, compared to Windows 11 interface, I like Windows 10 only. And uh, Windows 11 is new. There are many bugs I can see in that compared to Windows 10. So that is why I'm still in Windows 10 only. I like Windows 10 interface compared to the Windows 11. And Windows 11 is new, right? So every day you can find new bugs in Windows 11. So that is why I'm still holding with Windows 10. So when I get a complete version of Windows 11, then I'll move on. You can see it is easy for me to ask to go with the task manager and to get and see this. But in Windows 11, again, I need to search for the task manager. I need to look for that. So like that. Yeah, you can use some website where you can find this some Kali Linux fundamentals. And go with this, create the Kali Linux users and create the passwords, all these things. Try to learn them. Okay. It will work, but uh, it requires more processor. Try to get a good processor. Get a good laptop or good processor. And I think it will be slow to be frankly saying. Other option, there's no other options actually to be frankly. If you go with cloud base also, it requires you need to go with payment again. And again, they'll give the limited resources, so only 4 GB RAM like that they'll give you. All right, yeah, that's okay. All right, please share any material or notes. See, completely have given the document on networking already to the team. So I don't know whether they submitted for you or not. I've shared or else I'll share this in the chat box also. Just a second. Let me... Share this networking document for you. I don't know whether they shared or not, but I have given. Even I'm giving some Linux commands, user commands also for you. Right. So I have given some document. You can go with that. So don't share that in the JPG, just try to share that in the document. It's a single page again. Hmm.
all right that's it for today guys so thank you thank you for attending the session see you next time